All right, so what we want to do now is we've got this project, and according to our original idea, what we want is that when someone goes to the About screen, then they want to click a button to give us a map, driving directions to the college. Now, before the break, I said, that's not that complicated. And I lied, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a template, a starting point to help us do that. But in one sense, it's not that complicated because if you go look up geolocation online, and I'll just show you here quickly, over at w3schools.com, there is an article here about learning about geolocation, which is finding locations with HTML5. So this is going to give us the example code and how compatible it is and all of that. And basically, it all comes down to this code here, navigator.geolocation.getCurrentPosition. That is JavaScript. It looks like the syntax of JavaScript. It's, it's modern HTML5. And what that does is it gets the current position. That plus many other things will then allow us to create a map, display a map, because we saw that that code from Codica, remember that code that we commented, is asking for a location. And we, it had started off with Wisconsin, and we put San Diego. Well, if we can figure out what is the current location and save that variable and feed it into that element that displays the graphic, we're, we're getting closer to creating what I want. But the way we will do it in this class is, again, we'll, we'll use a, a framework, a starting point, so that we don't have to write all of this on our own. This, by itself, over at W3 Schools, will let you test it, uh, share location, and right here, it got my coordinates. Uh, okay, what do I do with coordinates? I need to build a map out of it. I need to do turn-by-turn -turn direction. So that's the hard part. To actually request coordinates, that's not that hard. To make it do something meaningful, that's the hard part. And so the way we will do it for this class is, let's all go back to the network folder, minimize everything and go back to the network folder, to our class, and I've got a new file for you. Go back to the Android folder, and it's not inside any folder, it's out by itself, it's map.html. Copy map.html and paste it into the your project folder where your index file is at. Not in any subfolder or anything, but where your index is at. Copy that over and then we'll look at what, I, what I've given you. Map.html in my network folder, copy it to your project folder. So just to confirm, I've copied the map HTML file into the same folder as my index. Let's edit the map file in Notepad to see what I've given you. Right-click Edit Notepad. It's got 130 lines of code. Um, at the very bottom, if you scroll down to an approximately line 110, that's where the main body starts. From about 110 to 130, that's 20 lines of code. There's not that much HTML code in the body. The rest of the 100 lines about is JavaScript. So we, even if we had an extra week to work, I wasn't going to have you write 100 lines of JavaScript to get this to work. I would still give us the starting point. But let's break it down to see what it is. If you save it and run it, It's a jQuery looking like element uh, with a map in the center, a button get directions, a back button. Well, it doesn't know where to go back to uh, at the moment, perhaps. All of this that we've got here, it also looks like it's jQuery Mobile 1.3, doesn't it? So this is our starting point. We need to fix it. And notice at the very, very bottom, last line, I have a note here that, th that says, there's a link to an article on stackoverflow.com. A few years ago, when I was developing this class and I wanted to teach about adding maps and such, I, of course, looked it up online and ideas, and I synthesized something, and I got this starting point, this idea, over from an answer on Stack Overflow. 
and then I took it and I changed it and I presented it in the class. Well, let's break down what we've got, starting on line 109. That's where the actual body starts. We've got div, data role, page. We don't have time at the moment, but that div should actually be a section, of course, because it's a page. Div, data role, header, that should be a, a header. I'm not going to do it at the moment. Directions, so that's normal. Then we've got href on click. This is a little bit different. This is that back button that's at the top. And we haven't seen this before, but it says on click history.back. That's some JavaScript. And what that is doing is it's tapping into the web browser's history, the history object. Remember, we had console.log, we had document.getElementById, we had objects that we're applying methods to, JavaScript. We've got the history object, which the web browser is keeping track of every web page you're visiting, isn't it? There's history. And here we're saying, let's go back one point in history. Right now it doesn't do anything, because if I open this file, there's no history. I open this file, and here I am. But if I came from the index file, and then went to this file, there would be history. So this history.back would take me back one point in history. And I'm adding an arrow here, the arrow to the left. And the word back. So obviously if I change that, it'll say something else. We've got another div class. Uh, this is UI, this is jQuery mobile. Anything UI dash whatever is jQuery mobile usually. And so this is saying there's something, there's some class, I don't ex understand exactly, there's a shadow maybe. Padding 1.25 m's, and then a div inside of that map canvas. Hmm, maybe my map goes here with a height. And that's what I'm seeing when I run this. There's some box with a uh, around the corners and a drop shadow, whatever, it's right there. There's something called div, data role, field, contain, label, inputs. This seems like a form. And notice there's a starting point. I'm sorry, there's a destination. Input, text, name, target destination. Value, the address of the college. So what this will do is it will create a driving directions from the person's location to that ending point. So if this were for my own company, all I need to do is change line 121 to my address of my company on Main Street, and this will then create driving directions to a person from wherever they are in the world to my location. Display none. That's hidden. If you go into line 121 and change it from at the very end, it says style display none. If instead you change it to, to style display block, you will see an input box where a person can type in an address of their choosing. Not necessary, however. Why would I make my app let people give driving directions from where they are to where they want to go? No, I want them to come back to my place always. Wherever they're at, come back to my shop on Main Street. So that's hidden. But if you wanted to make it visible, we change that to display block. Display none makes sense. Don't display it. Display block doesn't quite make sense, but it just means display it on screen as, as a block as an element that's a block as opposed to inline or others. <clears throat> but I'm going to keep it as none. I don't need a person to choose their ending destination. That's my ending destination. There's, a, there's an href. It's got an ID, data roll button, and get directions with an icon of bullets, although the bullets are not showing up. It's looking like the weird plus symbol because it's got the wrong version of jQuery. Then we've got div with an ID. Remember, IDs are very valuable uh, because they, they let us style elements, yes, but they're very valuable with regards to JavaScript. If something is named, either with an ID or a class, we can target it, we can manipulate it, we can use it in JavaScript. If I were to say, hey you, which of you would you think I'm talking to? 
maybe no one. But if I say Jocelyn, we know we're talking to you. So an ID is like that. We know that we're dealing with an element in our code if we give an ID or a class some way to name it. We can control it still if it's a div, but there's more than one div on the screen, isn't there? So which of the many divs are we dealing with? We're dealing with the one named ID. That's why you see IDs a lot when you're dealing with complex projects, and you see classes also. But there's some sort of container called results, and it is hidden also. And then inside of it is another container to display the directions from the starting point to the ending point. So the actual body is not that much, 20 lines. It's all of that JavaScript that actually does something. Let's back up all the way to the top, and first of all, let's fix some things. This is pointing off to jQuery, the wrong versions. Let's go back to line 9 and change line 9 so that it's simply href. We'll do this again. It's simply href jQuery mobile 145. This should be familiar. We did it earlier. Um, don't change the jQuery just yet. Change it to jQuery mobile references. The second jQuery, uh, the second one is 16. Change line 16 so that it's also simply jQuery mobile 1.4.5. Version 2 was jQuery, but we won't change that just yet. Now, this starting point is based on the example that's up on the web. Up on the web, you know, it does all of that. Our version might not be fully functional because it is not um, the web version just yet. Um, what I mean by that is this version is on a web server. It's on a web server and therefore it can access web resources. On our particular one, we're looking at it locally. It's not on the internet and therefore sometimes some of these things don't quite behave. But actually, for the moment, um, what I found was we need to actually reference an older version, a slightly older version of jQuery. We've got 192, but that still is not quite the version we want. So I'm going to copy and paste this, and I'll show you how we need to change line <coughs> line 15. It's going to be like this. Change your line 19. We are, we are going to still reference the online version of jQuery. We, we could download it and put it in our local folder. We'd, we'd need to go back up to the jQuery website and go look for that file and download it. We could do that. We're going to leave the online version, though, because anyway, we still need to access online resources. This map is not going to work unless you have a connection to the internet. We would have to download all of Google Maps onto our app, and suddenly our app is 5 terabytes. So we're going to leave also, that you're going to see another line that says Google Maps JavaScript. That one we cannot download. That one does exist on the internet. We can, we can only access it by connecting to Google servers. And so that line right there, change that line so that it looks like this, ajax.googleaps. Notice that's HTTPS. 
ajax.googleapis.com slash ajax slash libs slash jquery slash 1.7.2 slash jquery.min.js. Yes. Mine says 1.9.1. Does that matter? It does. We're going to change it. Okay. So go ahead and change it like mine is there. And then now save it and run it. And it should now kind of work. It should ask you, it should pop up and ask you, would you like to share your location? The location may still not fully work because we don't have GPS on these, la on these desktop computers. Let's see if that worked. Again, sorry for all the typing there, but you want to point that over to that jQuery. The reason also that it's, it's not at jQuery 2 whatever is because here we're using Maps, the Google Maps API. It seems to be version 3. There's probably version 5 or something by now. I don't think if we simply change it to 5, this will work. It works as is now, and sometimes if it works, don't worry about it. But if we want to really upgrade it to the latest code, we'd have to go look up the documentation and see how it works. And actually, this version of pulling up a map is sort of like the quick and dirty way. The real way would be that I go to Google, I create a developer's account, and I, cre and I create an API key and tie it to my app and get really official with it. But here we're just going to borrow sort of like the publicly available Google map but for a real app, we would want to set up the real way. It's more complex. But hopefully, if I save it and run it, <coughs> share location, and it gives me a map. Question? Where is our um, index? This is not in the index. We're leaving it in the map HTML file. So if you change that code, it should look like this. It actually will ask you for directions. You, you click the button and you say, yeah, give me directions. It'll give you a map. Again, it's not accurate because we don't have good GPS on these things. Get directions, and it'll make a little directions from A, which is where we are supposedly, to B. And then all of those directions appear. So that's what that's doing. That's what line 19 is doing. Uh, we're accessing the Google servers to their API application programming interface. Many companies nowadays give you like an entry to their code to use their code, to use the Google Maps code. It's usually at an API like that, an endpoint. We would need to go read the documentation to see what does sensor mean and how do I change it to Spanish and how do I change the zoom and all of that. We would go read the documentation this at this point works and it comes from an idea at Stack Overflow which is at the very bottom. All of these other hundred lines of code, I'll mention what they do a bit briefly, but following on line 22 there's some variables that are being created, one that will hold the map, one that will hold our current position, one that will hold what kind of directions to display and what kind of service We've got something here that waits for the page to be live and then checks right here, line 28, like I showed you at W3Schools, position is basically the secret that will make a website check the person's location. That can have either a location success or a location error. If you highlight location error, you will see that there's a function called location error. That means, for some reason, my GPS didn't work, my GPS was weak, I canceled it, what will happen is it will automatically initialize to somewhere in downtown San Diego. So at least there's some starting point, if that's a location error. Can you plug that in there? They're, they're already there. It's ready for us. We would have to look up the coordinates for some other starting point if we wanted a different starting point by default. And it's in latitude and longitude. Um, there could be a location error or a location success. Well, here's a function that defines what is location success. Location success runs another function called initialize. With initialize, we take the latitude and the longitude of the coordinates we gathered from the position that we asked for. 
Initialize means, down here, function initialize. Take the latitude and the longitude, and then we're going to create a brand new Google Map object, renderer and service, don't worry exactly what that means. Based on our current position, we're going to create a Google Map map new Google Map zoom <coughs> level 15. If you want to zoom in more, zoom in less. Line 52 is where we change that. Center the map onto our current position. Current position is defined by taking the latitude and longitude that we asked for. What kind of map to display? I see something that says road map. What other options do I have? I don't know. I need to go look them up at the Google Maps documentation. Maybe I have bike map. Maybe I have bus map. Maybe I have terrain map. Oh, yeah, they, do let you switch. they do let you switch. So I would need to look up the documentation to know how do I change that. There's a part about how to the directions, how to use directions, um, position marker. If you actually click on the marker right here, it pops up with something here. If you click on this marker. It pops up with that, and you can define those things in the code here. Current position, latitude, longitude, info windows, calculate route. Again, I'm not going to go through all of this in detail. This is 100 lines of code that creates a map and directions. And the way it all works is because we've got Google Maps service. We use JavaScript to ask for location, save that information, create a map as per Google's instructions, and then there's some other stuff here. We will do more complex JavaScript together ourselves, of course, but at this point, this is checking current positions, creating a map. There's something here on line 87 to 92 that is deactivated. I don't know what it does. Let's de deactivate it. Let's activate it. And let's see what happens. Go to line 87 and 92 and take away that comment. Line 87 starts your comment, delete that. Line 92 ends the comment, delete that. Can you figure out what that's doing? I hope not. Let's see what happens. You don't get your position first? Get directions. I click get directions. Head north on front towards Hawthorne. Okay. <laughs> Turn left at the first cross street. Okay. Take the interstate. So what it's doing is it's giving me the literal turn by turn directions. It's giving me a pop-up. Alert. And it's giving me a pop-up of my route each individual step, from step zero to ninety or whatever, how many steps it takes to go. It will give me an instruction for my whole route, and it will pop it up. That's obviously very annoying, but I've got that little bit of code that I can repurpose if I, if I play with this so that it tells me in a better way, in a more user-friendly way. So that was perhaps a to-do. Later, I'll make that work. Right now, I'm leaving the code there. I'll work with it later. So I'm going to deactivate it again because I don't like those pop-ups bothering me, but... That's what that's doing. It's showing me my direction step by step. And then I've got something that says actually show it on screen. Results. Take that results and actually show it on screen. Again, the complexity of this, we, we see it working just fine. But behind the scenes, there's 100 lines of code to make it work. And that's a simple project. Think about the complex apps that you use, Instagram, Facebook, your, you know, Mint, your, your um, mileage tracking apps, your health apps, all of these things are thousands of lines of code, millions of lines of code. Everything that we need it to do has to have some sort of code for it. Hide that, show that, and all of the logic inside of it here. And so this is what I'm saying about it. it's, it's easy or not, because I'm, I'm giving you a starting point. We have something that we can work with. We can further edit it later. But here's a starting point. It's not fully functional yet, because if I go back to my index file, I still have no way to access it. It's in a separate file. 
I could copy and paste that code from map into index, but just to see that it can be done different ways, I'm going to leave the map in its own file. All of the code of the map is going to be unique in this file, but I then, I then need to link from the index file to the map file. Let's do that. Make sure your map file is saved if you changed anything, and go back to the index file. And let's go back to line 251 or so. That's where I've got the About section. And I will create here um, driving directions. I'm going to create a, ma a button here near the area inside of your About section near line 251 or so. I will create an A tag, href, we'll fill that in in a moment, data roll button, um, data <coughs> dash icon, I believe we've got, got one called navigation, Our href, it's pointing to a different file, similar to what we did when we made the link from our project over to the college's website. We've got another file. So our href is map.html. It's a different file. So we just put its just put its its path. We had to do something else though on the catalog button, didn't we? When we went to an external file. What else do we need to do? Hmm? Target, we could do, but we wouldn't want it because it's still in our project. Rel, yeah, so we want rel external. That applies to if I go from my project off to someone else's website, and it applies if I go from this file to a different file. So let's try this. Save it and run your index. Go to the About screen, you should have a brand new button for the map. Click that button and it should open the, the map. It should work like we saw a moment ago. And now your back button should work, because now we have history to go back to. So map.html, make sure rel external. Of course, make sure that your map.html file is in the same folder as your index file, or else it won't find it. So if I go to my About screen here, I see my icon, Driving Directions, click on that. Asks to share location, which I will. There it is. Get Directions, all of that works. Back button works. So now I've got history. Yes? You were just saying, with the back button, you might really want to take it back to the home screen rather than the About screen. No. You know, the thing is, unfortunately, Normally, we would do something like this. Um, we would do href, so don't do this, but we would do href index.html hash home. But unfortunately, that doesn't work in our current version of jQuery Mobile, the latest one. I believe in 1.5.0, they're going to fix that. Because that would work normally for an anchor, but it doesn't work here for some reason. They'll probably fix it in version 150. 
but I really wouldn't want it to go right back to home because that would break the user's experience. The user is expecting <coughs> to come from, to go back to where they came from. They were here under about, and if we were then to break their expectation and back takes you back to the home screen, they could get a little confused. I don't share location. Um, Could you go back to your line that has the href map.html? Yes, right here, line 251. <coughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so. At this point, the, the project is structurally is very, very sound. It has a lot of its screens and all of that. Content is still lacking, but we can get to that later. I, that plain design, I'm going to change that eventually, too. I want my own color scheme and such, and maybe my own icons and all of that. We'll get to that, too. And unfortunately, what we haven't gotten to get to and the class is about to be over is, remember when we were doing our wireframe here? We had our mobile project inside of its own folder, and we had some way that we wanted to detect because if, if a person visits our project, detect it. Does it go to the mobile version? Does it go to the desktop version? We didn't get to that. Uh, we need to do a little setup for that. We'll, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to cover it next month. Um, if not, I, I'll provide you the code. But uh, anyway, the point of this project is still going to be that it's going to be a, a, a mobile app, an actual app. So it might be moot to talk about that, although it might have been useful. that. Uh, adaptive web design. Remember, someone visits the site on a mobile device, it shows you the mobile version. But it's going to be an app eventually anyway, so we're kind of out of time. This class is sometimes taught as three weeks, sometimes as four weeks. Obviously, if we've got four weeks, we've got a little bit more time to do a couple more things. Uh, as we run down the end of the class for today, our project, I, I like it so far, it still has a ways to go, but the big idea for next month is let's turn this into an Android app. Let's turn this into an iPhone app. Windows Phone, whatever, and the, the capabilities of the device, the map, access contacts, send a text message, database, all of that stuff. That's what we're going to do with next month, with all of the setup and concepts there. And the big concept there is called Cordova. That's the code that we will be using, the framework that we will be using to upgrade this web project into an app, an app that will apply to all platforms. It's pretty cool, pretty magical. So at this point, I'm going to save my work. I'm going to save it to the network folder. We'll have a little lab time. If you need any help, I'll help you out. I'll put my code in the network folder if you want it. I'm going to upload all of these videos, review them. And again, when we come back next time, it's a new class. Please line up. Get here a little bit early. Get here a little bit early and make sure you, uh, you get here on time. And I'm going to give out a brand new ad code and syllabus and handouts and everything. Next time. Next Tuesday. One moment. Let me put my stuff in the network folder and I'll pull that up one moment.